mind back right mentally and things like that. But it's kind of like dealing with people that you can't relate to. I don't can't relate to you. And, and then you kind of like, eh, like whatever. And, and you just go about your day. Cause like the, the, the thing is like, you know, how, how do we understand, um, you know, when you need help, when you're going through depression, anxiety, things like that. Like I was saying for me, until, until probably within the last year, what I thought might have been adrenaline was out, might have been anxiety this whole time. And I didn't know because to me it always felt the same way. It, it felt yeah. the same way it did when I was playing sports and, and getting ready for things like that, kept competition and things like that. So it, it feels like that same feeling to me. Um, so it was like, you know, how do people know when they need to take that step and have that, have those conversations with somebody else? Yeah, I think I think what you said that was there's a couple things you said that was super super interesting, right? One is um your experience with that counselor that that middle-aged white guy and the relatability piece that that crowd is exactly why i am why my business is what it is right because we need to have more people who we can relate to in more places more just more access in general and the great thing about what we are doing with technology is that we um we can now see clients that are not even coming to our office they could be somewhere else and i can still provide therapy for them right because because of a particular credential that i have and a particular software that i use but that just means that more people have access to us um and so they don't have to go see a middle-aged white man anymore they can find a young a younger black man um or a younger black woman or a younger anybody or, or a, a black anybody right like just so that they can relate to them but um it's important to have that and our research tells us that we connect more to counselors who we think can relate to us and the reason for that is we don't always want to have to explain every single thing we want our counselors to understand stuff that we can't even say which means the counselor has to be skilled enough in listening to what is being said and also feeling and using their intuition of what is not being said right. we have to hear and process all at the same time we have to pay attention to what's not being said and potentially why it's not being said but when you can relate to somebody those conversations happen a lot easier they happen with finesse right because you're just like you don't even when you were telling me about the security guard you didn't even have to say anything else i knew exactly where you were about to go right because i can relate on that element right on that level and so we need more counselors that are relatable to us um so I got so excited about that. There was something else. What was the last question you just asked me? I just more so um, understanding, you know, when we need, when we should start having those conversations and seeking help and, and understanding the difference between um, understanding when we're having, going through anxiety or depression and things of that nature. Um, and yeah. Distinguish between the anxiety and the andro- adrenaline and things like that. It's, it's different for everybody, right? Because we're all, our, our levels of, um, of tolerance, of self-tolerance, that's really what it is, are different. So some people can um, tolerate a lot. They can tolerate a lot of thoughts. They can tolerate a lot of feelings. Um, and some people can't. And the tolerate, toler, tolerance doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. Some people can tolerate a whole lot because they've experienced trauma or abuse um, for a long period of time. So that so they, they just have a higher tolerance. But whenever somebody just feels off, when they just feel like this is too hard, and it could be a statement as simple as that, like this is too much okay that's the time that you need to go to counseling then right and it could be this is too much at work or this is too much at home or this is too much that i keep looking at my bank account and i got five dollars in it and that's all i have right like it could be this is too much of anything and that and what you're basically saying to yourself is this is too much for me to deal with by myself and so then that means it's time to get a counselor. That means it's time to get an accountability partner to help you figure out certain things in your life, to help you figure out when when some of those moments are purely adrenaline and when some of those moments are, are actually um, anxiety. And our bodies are tricky in those kind of ways because our bodies operate in survival, right? That the, the, the um, This is real technical, but real quick. Our brains are divided into different sections and the back part of our brain is our limbic system and that's where we experience all of our senses and our emotions and things like that Um, and then our chemicals are being released from the the more center part of our brain adrenaline can mask a lot of uh, 
emotional issues, but so can things like serotonin, which is another chemical that our body naturally releases, our oxytocin, um, and things like that. So our dopamine. Um, and I'll give you an example for dopamine. So if you're doing something that you really like doing, say a person really likes crocheting, right? Their brain will release dopamine during that time. The word dope, like drugs, comes from this word dopamine. And so their brain will release dopamine and they will experience a high. And so in that moment, they think that their world is perfectly fine. But the moment they put the crochet yarn and needles down, then they're depressed again, right? And so that's because their brain has created this high for them and masked the depression. And so what we what therapy does is it helps to increase the dopamine without necessarily using the crochet, but it also deals with the depression. So our brains, because we are trying to because our body is trying to survive, our brains will trick us often to make us think one thing is happening when something else is actually happening because it just wants us to survive. And, and there gets a point where we're tired. And you know, people are always like, I'm tired, I can't do this anymore. That's when you need to go to counseling. And it doesn't make you weak to be able to want somebody to like help you out. Like we ask for help in other ways, right? Like you go to a barber, that barber has to help you. Isn't he helping you? Like you don't have to be going to the barber to help you. I don't have any problem going to my ophthalmologist and getting some cute frames. But we, but we still have a problem asking somebody to help us figure out other elements of our life. And that's not fair to ourselves. And, and sometimes, though, the other thought, thought process for some people is uh, somebody has it worse. These people have it worse than me or somebody has it worse than me. So is my problem enough for me to actually hit that level? But it's more so comes down to and from what you're saying is what you can really handle. And when you're saying, <laughs> hey, I, this is enough for me and I can't do this by myself. So I need to have that conversation with somebody else just to figure out how I can get past this. Um, exactly and that's another 